Thank you very much, ICHR, for honoring me in this great uh, function. Uh, I feel so happy to be in the midst of you. Uh, <clears throat> now, uh, I have been uh, asked to speak about uh, what you call uh, keynote address uh, by Mr. Danino, uh, who is also my very good friend for more than 30 years now. And, and all of you, I think most of us, we are all known to each other. We are very happy. Friends, we are all Pramana Patavaha, Pramana Patu, means we uh, lay emphasis on evidence on all aspects of human activities. Not only in archaeological excavation and also in scientific themes uh, on which our friends are going to speak here, and also in literature and reconstructing history, archaeology is the tool of uh, reconstructing history. And so we place uh, importance on evidence. Uh, that is uh, pramana. And uh, in ancient times, our sutrakaras used to tell us, lekhya pramana, written documents. Anything that we try to interpret, we want uh, lekhya pramanas, particularly by great authorities in ancient times. So I am trying to present um, uh, this. Uh, subject. Uh, next one, please. I am not able to see this here. Yeah. This is on, um, well, this is the one. So this is the title that I have taken up. Yes, uh, listen to the voice of your ancient leaders because we are trying to uh, reconstruct uh, ancient history. And uh, I start with a small note which appeared long time back uh, in the Hindu, when there was a change of God, when the new government came up, there was a write-up that don't distort past historians. This was the heading. Somebody gave a report, and um, well, we all agree we, we, the history should not be distorted. There is no uh, doubt about that. But what is distortion? And who distorted it? And who is uh, going to correct it? That will be is the most important question. So I am not going into it. But this was given by Ifran Habib, who said that uh, he is warning. I, I will not go into the details of it, but I have chosen uh, two or three important points only. One, the role of dharma in the life of uh, the people of India for more than two to three thousand years or even more. The role of dharma in the lifestyle of the people. That is uh, number one. Number two, <coughs> little, I'll just touch upon uh, the distortion that is uh, found in the history book so far written, and what is the need for the ICHR to look into it and see whether uh, these distortions could be corrected. The second point is there are a lot of misunderstandings about the Tamil history, Tamil and Sanskrit, a lot of things are being written without pramana. So this is an appeal to see that make use of available pramanas, lake pramanas to reconstruct history. This is what I am going to uh, talk about and uh, I hope I will be able to. Uh... Now this is, what is dharma? One of the greatest personalities of India who has spoke and about dharma is Lord Buddha. Dhammam saranam gachami. 
he has emphasized the role of uh, dharma so this is what he says in his dhamma pada the first verse in the dhamma pada the character and personality of any country is reflected in the pure pure thoughts of great men bhagavan buddha begins his dharma pada in verse 1 as मनो पुष्पंगमो धम्मा पुष्पंगमा धम्मा मनो सेठा मनो मया एंड सो ऑन दैट इज धर्म सो ही एम्फसाइज इन इज होल वर्क धम्म पद वाट इज धर्म नाउ राधा कृष्णन डॉक्टर सरस राधा कृष्णन इन इज ट्रांसलेशन ऑफ धम्म पद of bhagavan buddha he says dhamma means mental nature vedana samgnya and samskara these are collectively named or termed dharma these are the results of vijnana which is called manas which is also called manas the mental faculties are determined by mind and they are themselves covered governed by that the mental nature or result of what we have that are chieftained by our thoughts says radha krishna if a man speaks or acts with a pure thought happiness will follow it is the uh, what is called yamaka vaggo dhamma pada chapter 1 so the influence of thought on human life and society all that we are in the result of what we have thought by changing our thought we change our lives and indirectly we change the character of the world well this has been already said one of the greatest rulers of india was ashoka maurya who lived in the 3rd century uh, and in whose time there was all round prosperity and humanism he declared that there are many kings earlier to him who wanted the people to follow the dharma the path of dharma he has made a special mention of it in the edict he expressly states that they were not quite successful the old kings earlier kings were not successful so he reflected and decided to propagate dharma among the people both by persuasion upadesha and stern decision that is adesha and he appointed dharma mahamatra for that purpose he says in his edict again and again what he enforced through dharma dharma mahamatra was not anything new what was the ancient system but but what he says is it was the ancient system paurani prakritihi in his edict he emphasizes paurani prakritihi that is the ancient system read his pillar edicts where he says what is dharma which is nothing but a way of life he wanted all the people not only within the country within his country but even beyond his boundaries to follow and practice dharma which was simple and glorious perception could someone help me in pressing this one because i am not able to see it 
Yes, next. I will see you next and, and then you will be coming back. I am not able to see this light is not there. Anymore. Well, uh, no, I let it be here. You just stand here and press next one. That's all. Um, the pillar inscription of Ashoka referring to the appointment of Dharma Mahamatras is now in Delhi. Next one. So what he says is, I am appointing them so that dharma is taught to antevasi, the students. So the dharma must be taught to the student at the school level. And what is that dharma? Is ete dharma gunaha. Next. The dharma mahamatras are engaged, then he said, no, back, back, come on. Engaged in uh, what you call uh, activities beneficial both to the ascetics and householders, grahasthas, also to all other religious. You hold it on automatically. Stop it. Okay, 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 right, right, no, no, okay, right. Dharma Mahatmatras are engaged in various activities beneficial both to ascetics and sannyasins and grahasthas and also to all other religious sects and the Buddhist assembly. Some of them are occupied with the Brahmanas and Ajivakas and Nigrantas and also others. So the first emphasis is towards students, the second other grahasthas and so on. So he addresses all the sections of the people to follow dhamma. Next. What is this dharma? He says, Mata Pitrushu Susru Shitavyam. Evam Gurushu Susru Shitavyam. Satyam Vaktavyam. Dhammam Acharitavyam. These are the things what he calls Dhamma Guna. These are the qualities of Dharma. Next. These Dharmas are not newly introduced by Ashoka. He emphasizes that it is Pavurani Prakriti. And then, so what is it? There are three aspects of Dharma. What is first said in Vedas? Second, what is mentioned in the Dharma Shastras or Dharma Sutras? This is the second one. And third, where there is doubt, either with reference to action or profession, the opinion of the Brahmanas who have important. Um, impartial. Yes, who are impartial in their outlook and who are the practitioners should be followed. Friends, it is said in Smritis. Smritis are the Dharma Sastra, Dharma Sutras. So they are called Vaidika Dharma Marga. Evidently, the style of the people of India, not only in India, but also in the whole of Southeast Asia, can be reconstructed only by recourse to the study of Vedic Upanishads and Dharma Shastras. Now, a study of original Dharma Shastra, not blind following of the Western concepts, reveals the worldly life of the people and code of conduct that form the real history of ancient Indian people. Now, in this connection, a study of uh, Manu Dharma Shastra and Gautama Dharma Shastra are very valuable. But most of the historians of recent history have not paid adequate attention to the study of Dharma Shastra, except Dr. P. V. Kane, who are the greatest personality who has 
published nearly seven volumes on uh, uh, Dharma Rathras of India. So it is necessary that we have to pay ad attention to the works and not give distorted views on the real life of Indian people. There is an urgent need to uh, study the Upanishad, Buddha, Asoka, Manu, Yajnavalkya, Gautama, Apastamba, and others to understand ancient theories that permeate the country from Kashmir to Kanyakumari. Manu defines dharma as <clears throat> what has been adored by ancient men, vidvat bihi, vidvat bihi sevitaha. Not only vidwan, but he must be sadbihi, vidvat bihi sevitaha. Sadbihi. And not only good people, but it is not casual, it should be always eternal. So, nityam. Aragat dveshi bihi, advesha ragi bihi. They should have no dvesha, they should have no personal likings, prejudices. So, advesha ragi bihi. So, one should be adored by the ancient scholars, vidvat bihi sevitaha, sad bihi, nityam, advesha ragi bihi. And that is not sufficient enough. Hridayenapyanignyataha. Your inner conscience must show that it is accept that it is correct what you are doing. Yad dharmaha. That prabhuta. This is dharma. And this dharma is the underlying spirit of whole of Manu Dharma Sattva. There is nothing religious in it. Next one. This is the formal definition given by, this is the same definition given by Manu, and which has nothing to do with religion. But when we talk of secularism, in modern times, we mean only anti-Hinduism. Next one, please. I think probably my bag, you have to take it out. But all the great thinkers of India, like Buddha, Asoka, Manu, and others, Sutrakaras, for thousands of years, thought of equality of uh, equality of outlook, called Samadarsana. You, you take any work, from Veda to recent times, they always speak of Panditaha, Samadarsinaha. So the one message they have given, the Dharma Shastra is Samadharsa and not what we today call uh, secularism. <clears throat> Next. Read Gautama. Gautama is one of the earliest Dharma Sutrakaras. Desa Jati Kula Dharma Sa Amna Yehi Aviruddha Pramanam. Evidence for the reconstruction of the social life is this. So, this sutra shows caste alone was not the criteria in deciding the disputes. It included desa, kula, and jati. Next. Historians in modern times refer to jati as caste. But in ancient time, very specifically, they mention it as profession. Manu says at the very beginning that Brahmana is not jati. He doesn't respect Brahmana just because of that jati. But they were assigned the profession of dharma, interpreting dharma. Next one. Now, there is an interesting inscription in Cambodia dated approximately 500 CE. The ruling prince Gautam, uh, Gunavarman consecrated the footprint of Vishnu 
on the day of Ashtami, Vishnupada. <coughs> on the day of Ashtami, considered astronomically auspicious and by a group of Brahmanas who advised him and who were praised as Amara, Amaras. Amara, as, as Amaras on earth. Vijas, masters, they were masters of Upaveda, Veda, Vedanga, and resembled the gods on earth. Now, this is there in Cambodia. So, you see, these words Upaveda, Veda, and Vedanga are mentioned in Gautama, who is far earlier, Gautama Dharma Sutra. Tatsacha Vyavaharaha Vedaha Dharma Satrani Angani Upavetaha Upavedaha Puranam. So it is the ancient Puranic system. Next one. It is clear that Dharma Satra, the role of life of ancient people is not only a part of Indians, but is followed throughout Southeast Asia like Thailand, Cambodia, Vietnam, Laos, etc., where you have enormous amount of Sanskrit inscriptions. Now, Ramila Thapar holds that it was Asoka who expounded the idea newly to Indian political and social theory. She holds that Asoka did not see Dhamma resulting from good deeds that were inspired by former religious belief that there should be no religion. But as conformity to social ethics, this is what she says in her own book. Next. She also holds that Asoka Dharma is not Buddhist in nature, but it was a new and original idea. I want to show within inverted commas. Dharma that Asoka taught was new and original idea of Asoka to which he gave definition. Now, this is the distortion. When we say we should not have distortion, this is distortion. So it is a distorted idea for Asoka himself says that what he taught was not own, his own, but the ancient system, Paurani Prakriti. It is a tradition. Satyam vada dharmam chara this is there in the Veda, Upanishads, Taitri Upanishad, which is called Sikshavalli, where uh, all these are given exactly Asoka reproduces the same what is said in his Sikshavalli of Taitri, Taitri Upanishad. Next one. The following statements of great Sutrakaras may be also seen, which show the role of Dharma and also impartial outlook of Indian heritage. Next one. Gautama, samaha prajasu syat. Equality among people. Jati janapadane dharmat dharmagnyaha sreni dharmaha. There are so many dharmas, each belonging to each group and professional groups, not one. But the underlying principles are the same. Next, Sati Dharma, Sampasyet, Atmanam, Sakshinaha, Desam, Rupam, Cha, Kalam, Cha, Vyavaharinam, These are the use for Dharma, to reconstruct Dharma. Then, Tapar says, in her book, Indian History, Dharma Sastras are not Lakhot. This is something, another important uh, distortion, absolute distortion. The entire Dharma Shastras are law codes. Manu, Yajna Velkya, read P.V. Kane, seven volumes, and read um, uh, Rama Joyce, who has written two volumes on uh, Dharma Shastra, the role of Dharma Shastra in judiciary, in the life of people, and in dis uh, deciding about the disputes between one and the other. And she says it is not law code. 
So we need to read the original rather than to read the translation and come to any conclusion on reconstruction history. Next one, please. Any scholar of Indian judiciary would show that Dharma Chastra were the most important law codes, legal codes. And next one. We may examine some dispositions of uh, history of Tamils because I have little time to com complete it. There are fanciful ideas. This is something which we have to address ourselves uh, because uh, they say Tamil is different, Tamil Nadu has a different culture, and all these, all these things are all not supported by Pramanas, not supported by written Pramanas, lecture Pramanas, inscriptional material, and so on. So these are the sources with which we reconstruct the Tamil history, Tamil culture. The main sources of ancient Tamil society are the Sangam classics, Tamil works, the most ancient Tamil grammar, um, Tolkapiyam, ancient grammar, the dramatic composition, Nadaka Kavya, Silapadikaram, and then the ancient inscriptions found on the rock beds and pottery, all of which show the Tamil language was greatly influenced by Sanskrit tradition and follow the concepts of Pan India. Uh, Pan-Indian lifestyle. No difference, absolutely no difference. <clears throat> the ancient Tamil sources unmistakably show that both the society and language were based on the four purusharthas, dharma, artha, kama, and moksha. Repeatedly, from Sangam literature, in Tamil literature, Purana, and all these are all referred to as dharma, atta, kama, moksha. They believed in varnasrama dharma. Undoubtedly, they give several sutras in the grammar, in the poetry, and so on. <clears throat> in many places, they literally translated from the Sanskrit sastric literature, like the dharma shastra, atta shastra, natya shastra, and Vatsyayana's Kama Sutra. There are literal translations in Tamil in ancient times. I have shown elsewhere, the great Tamil text called Tirukural is by Tiruvalluvar, assigned to first century BCE. Uh, we don't know, we don't have enough evidence, but we accept it for the time being. It is virtually the Sanskrit Dharma Sutras, Dharma Sastras in Tamil. Absolute. The first, it consists of three chapters. First is Dharma, the second is Artha, third is Kama. Arathupal, Purutpal, and Kamathupal. So the Dharma, Artha, Kama played a vital role in molding the character and life of the people of the Tamil country. Next one, please. Now, the most ancient written Tamil script was Brahmi adopted by the Tamils. Next. The letters found on ancient pottery in different places show from the very early period, Brahmi with the mixture of Varga character, Gaja, etc., showing the adoption to Tamil writing is known. The earliest Tamil inscriptions were Prakrit adopted to Tamil language. The Tamil grammar is based on many concepts introduced by Saint Agastya. Many of the technical terms in Tamil, according to the commentators, medieval commentators, these were all given by Saint Agastya. Excellent eminent poems are seen bearing northern poets names are seen uh, northern names. At no point of time in history of Tamil we find an isolated Tamil tradition. Sanskrit has been used both in personal and royal life and side by side with Tamil in the fields of literature, music, dance, architecture, law courts, temple worship, judiciary, 
civil courts, time and measure, and in all aspects of other human life. In the royal administration, in the government orders, we see both Tamil and Sanskrit used together. In, and in some instances, royal orders, regular orders, were both in Tamil and in Sanskrit. It's the same case in Southeast Asia also. You have a Sanskrit inscription and the regional Khmer inscription in Cambodia and Thai inscription with the Sanskrit inscription. So it is the same tradition that at no point of time Sanskrit affected the development of regional language. This must be told and this distortion that has been uh, uh, what you call indoctrinated again and again in our mind from the schools must be removed. Otherwise, they must show us the pramana from where they say about this individuality. There is only one with which I will close. There is an inscription. There are several inscriptions I can show you. One is by Raja Raja Chola, the greatest ruler, Chola ruler. His inscription is engraved on stone walls. And the first one is completely in Sanskrit. It is the government order, which is in Sanskrit. And the same thing, word to word, word to word, that order is translated in Tamil. And both of them are written side by side. So Sanskrit was never considered an alien language as is being now introduced by our people. Next. I have given you the example, I need not read this. So the claim that Sanskrit is a dead language. It is used in the royal order till very recent times, till the colonial period. When they came and said Sanskrit is different and that Tamil race is different and so on. There is no evidence for all this. This is Swasti Sri, Raja Raja, Kesari, Orma, Sambhatsare, Saptame. It goes on, complete, absolute Sanskrit, beautiful Sanskrit. 10th century Sanskrit, royal order by the greatest king. And then it is followed by word by word translation in Tamil. So there is no question of any, it is something like what has been there in Karnataka, in, in Andhra, in Orissa. Both in all these places, the regional languages were there, the Sanskrit came, and the Sanskrit never disturbed any of these regional languages. It only developed them, gave them idea. But they had the common works in medicine and architecture, worship and law. We have examined the laws in Assam, in Bihar, in UP, in Gujarat, in Rajasthan and so on. Everywhere the legal aspects, the legal texts are all Dharma Shastras. So there is a need, urgent need to focus as the written example of law code in ancient India, throughout in whole of Southeast Asia, Sanskrit Dharma Shastras for reconstructing social life of the people, life of the people. Even now we follow the same sutra. If somebody asks me, what is your sutra? I don't say the constitution in my personal life. We follow sutra, Apastama sutra, or Bodhayana sutra. Achalayana Sutra. Is there any society in the world which has preserved such law code which has been used for nearly 3,000 years in individual life of the uh, individual life of the citizen? That is Indian culture. That is Sanskrit culture. That is universal culture. It is eternal culture and we should concentrate on it and see that our books. Is there any book? Where you say, Taitriya Samhita say, Satyam Vada, Dharmam Chara, Matru Devo Bhava, Pitru Devo These are the Dharma Gunas. What we want the children to be taught, these are these Dharma Gunas, which are found in the uh, Upanishads. And tell them, so nearly 3,500 years ago, this is the Dharma Sastra that controls and it continues to control. Thank you very much, friends, for all this. Question.